right now, rolling on the speedway, is the first qualifying heat in the limited sportsman division. These are the lower point limited sportsmen who are eligible to qualify for the main event. On the pole, driving the number 15 is Don Tapley Jr. To his outside in the 67 is Larry Vos. Second row to the inside, the 64 of Rick Verrill. To his outside, the 66 of Phil Fernet. Third row to the inside, the 29, David Wiles. To his outside, the 104 of Ed Strong. Fourth row to the inside, the 86 of Robbie Herrick. And to his outside will be the 85 of Scott Chapman. Assistant starter Junior Niles on the flag stand for heat number one for the limited sportsman division. Gives the all clear as the drivers glance to the flag stand. Pace car will make its way onto the infield pit road. We will look for a start at turn four. Don Tapley and Larry Vos bring the field down. Look for a start out of turn four. Green flag. Don Tapley from the inside with the advantage. Larry Vos hung on the outside. Here comes Rick Verrill to challenge for a second. Side by side battle for a second. Now only 12 cars to qualify for the main event. Don Tapley continues to show the way. Rick Verrill is in second. Larry Vos third. Phil Fernet fourth. And fifth place, the 104 of Ed Strong. Last qualifier at the moment in the 12th position is Steve Reno in the number seven. Those cars unable to get up into the top 12 positions will have to come back and try to get a qualifying position in the consolation event. But obviously all the drivers want to qualify in their qualifying heat. Don Tapley continues to show the way. A lot of pressure now from Rick Verrill. Verrill looks to the outside as they approach turn three. Tucks it back in at turn four. Rick Verrill trying to make a move on the outside of the number 64. this 15 lap qualifying event. These are the lower point limited sportsmen, cars and drivers at this particular time in the season who are eligible to run in the main event. Don Tapley from the inside, Rick Verrill from the outside. Flagman points to turn four, green is up. Once again, Don Tapley with the advantage from the inside. Verrill trying to mount a challenge from the outside. Phil Fernet trying to find room beneath the 64 of Verrill. Continues to be Don Tapley. Side by side battle shaping up for second now. Phil Fernet to the inside. Rick Verrill to the outside. Fernet with the advantage on the backstretch in the number 66. Scott Chapman up to fourth. Robbie Herrick on the move in the 86 on the outside. Halfway point. Eight laps down, seven to go. Last qualifier at the moment would be the 56 of Robert Bodwell Jr. Remember, only 12 cars to qualify for the main event. Rick Verrill now dives beneath the 66 of Phil Fernet who retakes the second place position. The 66 went a little wide, opened up the inside for Rick Verrill and he's back up in a second place. 
Man on the move, Robbie Herrick in the 86. Robbie Herrick started out in the ninth starting position, has worked his way up to fourth. Trying to mount a challenge now to the outside of the 66-66, smoking the right rear tire out of turn four, losing traction, and that opened up the outside for the 86 spin in the two turn. Lloyd Washburn, Robert Bodwell, that will bring out the caution once again. The 76 of Earl Glidden and up against the backstretch wall, the 79 of Phil Weber. And we are under caution once again. 11 laps down. Very, very competitive limited sportsman division here at Beechridge Motor Speedway. But green is up. This time, Farrell with a quick jump from the outside along with Robbie Herrick Tango right here into turn one. David Wiles in the 29 gets the car out of shape. We'll try to refire the 29, can't do it, and that will put us under caution once again. They tell us the 50-50 is already up to $1,500. So we are in for perhaps a record win for someone here tonight. Remember, 50-50 sales going on directly under the center of the grandstand. But right now, we're looking for a restart at turn four. Green is out. Don Tapley to the inside. Rick Farrell to the outside. Advantage on the outside. Farrell out of turn two. Trying to squeeze by on the outside, and he does. Here comes Robbie Herrick in the 86. Robbie Herrick now challenging for second place, working to the outside of Don Tapley. 12 laps down. Last qualifier at the moment would be the number 50 of Alan Burby. Two laps to go, indicates the starter. Rick Verrill, Robbie Herrick, Don Tapley, Phil Frenette, Scott Chapman, your top five. And still, I believe, it is a battle between the 50 and the 67 for that last qualifying position. White flag is out. One lap to go. Rick Farrell and Robbie Herrick have pulled away from the rest of the pack. Check it, flag in the air. Rick Farrell will collect the first qualifying event for the limited sportsman. Robbie Herrick second. Don Tapley. Phil Fournette. And it appeared to be the 42 of Kirk Bean. Rounding out the top five unofficially. Last qualifier was either the four of Lloyd Washburn or the 67 of Larry Vos. We'll have to wait for official call from scoring. As he coasts down to the start-finish line, let's have a nice round of applause for the winner of heat number one, the limited sportsman division, Rick Verrill. Ten laps on tap. First qualifier for the super sportsman division. These are the lower point cars and drivers at this particular time of the season. For those of you who may be new to the speedway, we do operate under a handicap system, a point system. As the drivers gain points, they start further and further back in the lineup. So you'll find in the second qualifying heats, the higher point cars. And of course, in the feature event, those high point men start at the very back of the lineup with the previous winner starting last. All clear from flagman Eddie Walsh as the cars stage on the backstretch. Bobby caught Russ Johnson. Rolling to turn four. Green is out. Russ Johnson with a slight advantage across the stripe. They're side by side into turn one. Bobby Cotton on the inside. Russ Johnson to the outside. Dave Sprague at their back bumper. Bobby Cotton leads lap number one down into turn one, trying to work to the inside, Dave Sprague with a challenge now for second.
Bobby Cotton, Dave Sprague, Russ Johnson, Tim Maloney, side by side battle, Spike Manitol to the inside, Doug Shores to the outside. Little by little, these super sportsman teams are getting the cars more and more competitive, and that's the result. A lot of bumper to bumper and wheel to wheel action in this new division. Inside groove apparently working a little better as it does many times in the early evening. Approaching the halfway mark. Five down, five to go. Young Bobby Cotton out of Tamworth, New Hampshire continues to show the way. Young second generation racer out of New Hampshire. His dad, Bob Cotton, competed here for many years at the Beach Ridge Motor Speedway as well as tracks in New Hampshire. A lot of pressure from Dave Spray coming up from the limited sportsman division. Good solid competitor here in this new super sportsman division. Tim Maloney, a newcomer to the Beach Ridge Motor Speedway. Tim Maloney in the 69 has already captured a feature event. Two laps to go this time by. Spike Manitow looks to the outside of Maloney now. Trying to see if he can get the 89 hooked up on the outside groove. White flag out. One lap to go. Dave Sprague looking beneath the 17 now, can't quite find room, check it, flag flies, Bobby Cotton captures heat number one in the super sportsman division, holding off Dave Sprague. Both of these drivers have been improving each and every week. Young Bobby Cotton, only 18 years old in his rookie season here at Beach Ridge Motor Speedway. The car is an 88 Pontiac Grand Am, sponsored by RAC Motorsports, along with London Machine. Nice round of applause for Bobby Cotton as he coasts down to the start-finish line. Winner of heat number one in the Super Sportsman division. All clear from Flagman Eddie Walsh as they stage down through turn three, looking to four. Green! is out. Tim Land down in a turn one from the inside. Gary Palsava looks for room beneath the 83 and he finds it side by side battle for second. Gary Palsava in the 27, Steve Carrier in the 83. Advantage on the inside. As young Mike Mayetta Jr. comes up through to take third, here comes Gary Johnson trying to take over that fourth spot. They have Steve Carrier hung on the outside, and he's finding it difficult to work the car out there. But Gary Pulsifer seems to like the outside in the 27 as he looks to the outside of race leader Tim Land. Veteran late model sportsman competitor in the 27, Gary Pulsifer. Trying to get that 27 hooked up in the outside groove, and if he can do it, that's going to be an advantage. Car's a little squirrely out of turn four. Tim Land, Mike Mayetta Jr. Halfway mark coming up. It will be five down and five to go. Tim Land continues to show the way. Side by side battle continues for second. Mike Mayetta Jr. to the inside, Gary Pulsifer on the outside. Tim Land doing an 
nice job in the number 16. Mike Mayetta Jr. looking for racing room to the inside. Glenn gets turned about out of turn four. With two laps to go, just a little contact in the 16 is about. And that allows Gary Pulsifer from the outside to take over the point. Two laps to go. He moves to the outside and it was almost a shot to the inside by young Mike Mayetta. Once again, Mayetta gets the inside groove. Takes over the lead between turns three and four. New leader with a white flag in the air, young Mike Mayetta. Problem on the number 27 as he has to back right out of it and head on a pit road. Have to hope it isn't anything too serious on the number 27. Checkered flag will fly for the rookie. Mike Mayetta Jr. captures heat number one in the late model sportsman division, followed by Gary Johnson, Kerry Winslow, Joe Bowser, Barry Babb. Nice round of applause, please, for young Mike Mayetta, Jr., winning heat number one in the late model sportsman division. Once again, 12 cars to qualify for the main event. The rest will have to try to do it via a consolation event where only eight cars qualify. All clear from flagman Eddie Walsh as the cars stage on the backstretch. Rookie Dave Langless, veteran Billy Thompson, Jr., to his outside. Flagman points to turn four, asks the drivers to hold it even. Green is out. Dave Langless from the inside with the advantage. Thompson tucks right into second place. Tim Gendron working to the outside of Al Bursett. And Don Culpert in the 21 round out the top five. Cars right down over the speed bumps. Gendron gets it sideways out of turn four, and the number 12 does a nice job of collecting the car. Side-by-side -side battle shaping up on the backstretch. Race leader Dave Langless now has Billy Thompson to his outside. Thompson across the stripe gets a fender ahead. Last qualifier in that 12th position appears to be the number... Either 24 or 19, it's up for grabs. Billy Thompson once again showing the power of the number six. If you were here last week, Thompson had a commanding lead in last week's feature event, only to have the transmission blow with two laps to go was a heartbreaker, but he's right back on the point. That last qualifying position appears to be in the hands of the 24. Spin in the two turn. Dennis Quinn gets it turned about in the 06. Dave Fecto out against the wall, gets the car refired. And we stay under green, the 19 of Phil Weeks off over the top of turn four. He gets it refired. All the cars continue to roll. Albert Set turns it about in turn one. That will bring out the caution flag. Flat right front on the 78 of Dave Fecto. All clear from flagman Eddie Walsh as the cars stage on the backstretch. This time, Billy Thompson will start from the inside. Dave Langless to the outside. They come to turn four. Green is out. Billy Thompson from the inside with the advantage. Here comes Tim Gendron to challenge Langless for a second. Gendron in the number 12 looks for racing room beneath the 93 and he finds it. Out of turn four, they have Dave Langless three wide now. He does a nice job of getting the car back down into that second groove. But once again, the point is in the hands of young Billy Thompson. Last qualifier appears to be the 69 of Richard Olin, but that's changing. Now the 68. 
knocking on the door of that top position. Kaz Tangle on the back stretch. Larry Jolinas up into the 68. We have a spin off over the top of turn three. Right at the halfway point of this qualifying event. And that will require the caution flag once again. Looking for a restart once again at turn four. Green is up. Billy Thompson. This time, Don Copran right at his back bumper. Tim Jenner on the outside. Dennis Hall and Dwight Shepard battling side by side for fourth. Smoke show from Albert set in the 23. As something lets go in the rear end. And that puts the car under the field under caution as evidently the gear lube, I would guess, has been dropped on the track there, down through turn one into turn two. And that will require the safety truck and the speedy dry. This time the drivers get the all clear from the flag stand. This time Billy Thompson has Tim Gendron to his outside. And once again, we look for a start at turn four. Green is out. Billy Thompson once again from the inside. He brings Don Copert with him in the number 21. Here comes Dwight Shepard in the 34. Billy Thompson with a lot of pressure from Don Copert in the 21. Dwight Shepard closing in on the 21. Then comes Tim Jenneran in fourth. Dennis Hall is fifth. The 12th place car appears to be the 88 of Mike Field. That would be the last qualifying position for the main event. Side of the number six of Billy Thompson. It will be just two laps to go, indicates Flagman Eddie Walsh. Two to go this time by. Fecto moving on the outside, working to the outside of the number 70. White flag in the air, one to go. Dave Fecto, the high point man now, trying to work his way up into the top half dozen. Has just one lap to do and works to the outside of the number 12. Dave Fecto came from the very last starting position. Check and flag for Billy Thompson, collecting heat number two in the limited sportsman division. Followed by Don Culper, Dwight Shepard, Dennis Hall, and Daryl Ward. Last qualifier unofficially was the 111 Pee Wee Knight. Billy Thompson, who suffered the agony of defeat last week, having a very comfortable lead. Nice round of applause, please, for Billy Thompson in the number six, winning heat number two in the limited sportsman division. Ten laps on tap. Dave Bath in the number five, Mark LeBlanc in the 08. Bring the field down. Green is out. Side by side across the line, down into turn one. Slight advantage to Dave Bath from the inside. But LeBlanc is not going to give up on the outside. He draws it even down into turn three. They go to turn four side by side. LeBlanc goes high, opening up the middle to the number six of Ken McLeod. 
Ken McLeod in the number six. Three feature wins already to his credit, and he is headed to the point tonight. Ken McLeod on the outside. Working head-to-head -head now with Dave Bath. Out of turn four, a fender ahead to the number six across the stripe. Scott Mulkern looking for racing room between cars, and it just wasn't there. Scott Mulkern in the 14, filling in for injured Chris Rule, was last week's feature event winner in this class. Ken McLeod, three feature wins, started out the year in tremendous form, just had the field covered, but little by little, the rest of these teams have found the handling combination on this super sportsman chassis, and the field has tightened up considerably. Scott Mulkern now trying to rein in the number six. They'll be approaching the halfway mark, indicates flagman Eddie Walsh. It will be five down, five to go. Here comes Mulkern to the outside. Scott Mulkern trying to find a way to draw it even with Ken McLeod in the number six. Meanwhile, Bubba Pelton has drawn it even to battle with Dave Bath for third. Outside. Up front, the number six still hanging on to a slim advantage over Scott Mulkern in the 14, two to go. Kevin Durgan now looking for racing room as he is momentarily boxed in at the back bumper of the number five has the 27 to his outside. White flag in the air, Ken McLeod one more lap to try to hold off hard-charging Scott Mulkern in the 14. Mulkern looks to the outside once again, trying to find a lane around the six, can't find it. Ken McLeod wins heat number two in the Super Sportsman division. Scott Mulkern second, Dave Bath third, Kevin Durgan is fourth, and Richard Bubba Pelton fifth. down to the start finish line a nice round of applause please for Ken McLeod driving the number six winning the second qualifying heat these are your high point late model sportsman drivers coming to turn four green is out Bobby Bell with the advantage across the straight Bobby Libby trying to mount a challenge on the outside but he has Glenn Cusack to his inside the race is for second Glenn Cusack to the inside, Bobby Libby to the outside. Here comes Paul Johnson looking for racing room. Bobby Babb with a strong jump out of turn two. Jumps out to about a two to two and a half car length lead over Glenn Cusack. Cusack looks to close the gap. Bobby Libby has faded a bit on the, back, on the outside. Will gather it up and try to mount a challenge on the backstretch. Last week's feature event winner in the number 37, Bobby Harrison, with a fine showing last week, said that the car was perfect. So the number 37 is certainly a car to keep your eye on here tonight, because he certainly had the field covered, capturing his first feature event of the 1991 season last Saturday night. Obviously, Bobby Harrison would like nothing better than to win tonight, because... You perhaps have noticed his sponsor is none other than Miller American, our sponsor tonight. Five down, five to go. Bobby Babb continues to show the way. New challenge now. Paul Johnson dives to the inside of the number two of Glenn Cusack. Side by side battle for a second. Paul Johnson to the inside with the advantage. Dropping Cusack back to third. Here comes Bobby Harrison now to challenge to the inside of the number two. The 
thus far, Bobby Babb, but now he goes a little wide, opens up the inside for Paul Johnson. The door was closed and Johnson had to back out of it. It will be just two laps to go. Once again, Paul Johnson looks beneath the number four, couldn't quite find the room. Bobby Babb will see the white flag in the air, looking to hold off Paul Johnson. One more lap. Babb turning the track in about 15.8 seconds. Good time in the number four. And a blanket can be dropped over the rest of the field. Check it, flag flies. Bobby Babb captures heat number two for the late model sportsman division, followed by Paul Johnson, Bobby Harrison, Glenn Cusack, and Bob Randall. These are the cars, along with those that you saw in the first qualifying heat for the late model sportsman division, which you will see in the Miller American Firecracker 50. Nice round of applause, please, for the winner of heat number two in the late model sportsman division out of Wyndham, Maine. Driving the Hall Implement, Wetterow, sponsored number four, Bobby Babb. Flagman asked him to pick it up just a little bit at turn four. Green is up. Pat Pearson and Steve Perry battle for the lead. Advantage to the inside. Pat Pearson in the number 20. Perry in second. Then comes the 11. Tom Marzelli. David Raymond in the number three. And here comes Bob Tremblay in the 07 to round out the top five. Ricky Libby on the move up the inside in the number 77. Spin by the 07. He gets up into the sand barrier on the backstretch. Backs it right up into the infield. Gets the car back underway and we stay under green. Continues to be Pearson. Now David Raymond up to second place in the number three as he works his way around the 87 of Steve Perry. Now sets his sights on race leader Pat Pearson in the 20. Tangle once again in the two turn. New leader, David Raymond in the number three. Caution flag flies as we have two cars. Unable to get back underway before the caution flag comes out. Ricky Libby gets his number 77 underway, but not until the caution flag and Steve Perry's number 87 still sits disa disabled. Coming out of turn two. Green flag out of turn four. Pat Pearson, this time Al Roberts on his bumper. Paul Holstrom in the 58 on the outside. Andy Gayu in the 115 working the outside groove. Out and around race leader, new leader. Andy Gayu in the number 115. Al Roberts now trying to take over second at turn three, he does. on the number three of David Raymond as he appears to be headed back to pit road. Tangle in the two turn once again. And that will put us under caution once again. Three car pile up in the two turn area. All clear from assistant starter Junior Niles. As the cars work down into turn three. We look for a start at turn four. Green is out. Andy Gayu right from the start. Sparks pour from beneath Al Roberts, number 63. Hard to tell just what that's from.
getting an early firework show here from the number 63. Evidently, whatever it was, it must have either broken loose or moved over enough so that it's not running. Problems on the 32. Guy pulling, flat tire on the right front, the number 32. Andy Gayu in the 115, tangle in the two turn once again. Down the backstretch, two more cars tangle. Up against the backstretch, well, and we are under caution once again. Rough night in this limited sportsman semi feature as we had a chain reaction there of about three tangles on the backstretch. All clear from the flag stand and we are ready to restart once again. Andy Gayu, Bob Tremblay on the front line. Green is up. In between turns one and two by the 124. He gets it back underway. And we stay under green. Tinker Doughty in the 124 up into the infield pit road. Two laps to go. Lead continues to be in the hands of Andy Gayu in the 115. Then comes the 58, Paul Holstrom. The 77, Rick Libby, white flag in the air. The 63 of Al Roberts, the 57 of Rodney Hughes. Check it, flag in the air. Andy Gayu in the 115 collects his second semi-feature of the 1991 season. car and the crew certainly has the 115 right on the money and I'm sure well I'm not sure hopefully enough points for Andy Gayu to work into the qualifying heats on Saturday night and an opportunity to run in the limited sportsman main event nice round of applause please for the winner of the Limited Sportsman Semi feature, Andy Gayu in the number 115. That is his second of the year. Collected a semi feature just two weeks ago. All clear from Flagman Eddie Walsh as the cars stage on the backstretch. Larry Vos, Mike Field on the front row. Flag is up. Mike Field with a slight advantage across the stripe. Two cars right into the infield. Gene Terrio and Dave Langless. Terrio is back underway. Cars evidently hooked together. Meanwhile, back up front, Mike Field. Here comes Rick Frenette in the 54 to take over second. Larry Vokes back to third. Kevin Buck is fourth. And Chuck Haynes in the number 68 is fifth. Last qualifier at the moment would be the 38 Beaver Norton. Strong challenge from the outside now. Rick Frenette trying to take over the lead from the outside and he does at turn two. Working in lap number two, new leader Rick Frenette in the number 54. Mike Field is second, Larry Bokes third, Kevin Buck is fourth, Chuck Haynes fifth, Robert Bodwell sixth, Beaver Norton is seventh, and Larry Gelinas in eighth, the eighth and final qualifying position. strength in the number 54 
has already captured one feature event. And he is running strong tonight. Strong battle going on back in that last group. As all these drivers are desperately trying to grab a qualifying position. Eight cars have put considerable distance on the rest of the pack. Approaching the halfway mark. Eight down and seven to go. Rick Fernet in the number 54 simply running away from the rest of the competitors in this consolation event. Straightaway lead now over second place competitor Mike Field. Field with a comfortable lead over third place car, the 25 of Kevin Buck. Larry Jelinas on the move in the number 37 as he works to the outside of the 56 now. Fire would be the 67 of Larry Folks. Gene Terrio headed on the pit road with a number 41. Just two laps to go indicates Flagman Eddie Walsh. And the straightaway tangle in the two-turn up against the backstretch wall. Looks like the 79 of Phil Weber, the 33 of Bob Doak is able to drive away. Caution flag is out. from the safety man is that the driver is fine. All clear from Flagman Eddie Walsh and he points to turn four. Two laps to go. Rick Furnett and Green is out. Rick Furnett, Mike Field. Advantage from the inside of Rick Furnett. Spin coming out of turn four by Larry Vos in the 67. He has pulled the axle, the right rear axle, out of the car. And that will put the cars under caution once again. As rookie Larry Vos has pulled the axle right out of the rear end of the number 67. And a tough break for the rookie. Once again, two laps to go. It will be Rick Furnett in the number 54, Mike Field in the 88. As they bring the field down to turn four, Green is up. Rick Furnett with a surge of power right off the line. Here comes Kevin Buck to take over second. Larry Gelinas on the move up to third to battle for third with Mike Field. White flag in the air, one lap to go. Last qualifier would be the 56 of Robert Bodwell Jr. Three wide in turn three. Checkered flag flies, Rick Furnett grabs the consolation event, followed by Kevin Buck, Mike Field, Larry Gelinas, and Chuck Haynes. Unofficially the top five. 
And unofficially the last car to qualify was the number 56 of Robert Bodwell. Rolling on the speedway once again. Part of the Tyrone Malone fleet sponsored here to the speedway by Merchants Tire. And pleasure to have the folks from Merchants Tire. And of course a pleasure to have the Tyrone Malone competition show trucks with us here at Beach Ridge Motor Speedway. Mentioned earlier that at random some passes were given out to youngsters as they came through the gate tonight. And that was to have the opportunity to ride in one of these special race trucks. I mentioned earlier these trucks are pretty well known throughout a good part of the world, particularly this truck that leads the way, this red, white, and blue, once again is called the Super Boss, the world's fastest diesel-powered truck. And that truck has been in a number of countries around the world. The black truck, the second one in line, called the Bandag Bandit. That truck turned 150, almost 151 miles an hour on the Bonneville salt, pl salt Flats. It's powered by a 1,300 horsepower dual turbocharged V12 Detroit engine. Has two transmissions, weighs 16,300 pounds. Holds the world's record in the one quarter mile for trucks at 105 miles an hour in 13 seconds. And we prepare to go trackside now to Andy Cusack. Andy? Thank you, Bruce, and good evening, everybody. Welcome to our special celebration of America. And what better way to start it off with a red, white, and blue truck driven by our double championship winner from 1990, Mike Maeda, and his son, the new rookie upset, Mike Maeda Jr., at this time on the track. We are especially privileged to have with us tonight, all the way from Central California, Mr. Tyrone Malone and his million-dollar truck racers. What's the deal with these trucks, Tyrone? Well, Andy, I'll tell you. Hey, good job, guys. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I left California about the 5th of March. I've done about 29 places. I'm not racing this year, just doing Bandag open houses. And while I'm on the subject of Bandag, I'd like to thank Merchant's Tire, my local Bandag dealer, for bringing me to town. But I had four or five days off, and I found out that you folks were celebrating Hey, welcome home, troops. And I said, Malone, get those trucks out there and help welcome them home. And that's what we want to do, OK? Thank you. I've done 1,430 shows, about 200 in Europe and about 100 in Canada. I've been to Alaska with these trucks. I've been to Australia. This truck you're looking at, the Super Boss, the first jet truck ever beat ever built it beat in 1978 in a quarter mile it held the record at 102 and 13 and a half seconds but the black truck now holds it at 105. i have about 15 pieces of equipment but ladies and gentlemen i found out one thing in life it isn't really how fast you go it's how much you go show and i enjoy doing it with you and tonight this is not my tariff i like to be at a quarter mile so i can run to 100 mile an hour and put that truck in a spin and bring her down there but i'm going to do my best for you and i want to thank you because this track is one of the finest that i had the privilege to go to the people here in maine are fine people and i welcome all of you to california one day how about it Thank you very much, Andy. I appreciate it. Tyrone, it's been great to have you. I also want to thank all of the Miata family. They're fantastic. And tomorrow my crew is going to the lake with them. But uh, they're really nice people. And, and Bob Tellison at Bandag, great help, and all the Bandaggers here. Ladies and gentlemen, I do run on Bandag retreads front and rear. I will apply 18,000 pounds of pressure. I did it 1,000 times and never torn one of those bandags off. And you're going to give us a little show of your own driving now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again, Tyrone Malone.
Azalea, California to Scarborough, Maine. The pioneer in truck racing here in the United States. Turn four, ladies and gentlemen. Now the type of racing is a straight drag type racing that Tyrone Malone is used to. Setting speed records on the Bonneville Salt Flats. Setting up to do a little burnout here in turn four. As he cranks up the horsepower. sacrifice so much for this great country. Let's give them a big American thank you. The Cusack family and all of the staff, drivers, and teams at Beach Ridge Motor Speedway take special pride in this great country and this unique and spectacular sport of auto racing. While baseball, basketball, football, and other major league sports certainly are great American pastimes, what better represents the prosperity, ingenuity, individualism, freedom, and independence of the American people than the automobile? During this tribute, we'd like you all to take pride in the rich heritage of the freest nation in the world, a nation people all over the world wish they could call their home. From a revolution to gain our independence, to a civil war, and going to the aid of others in times of need, this nation has been through as much and achieved more in a little over 200 years than most nations have in many times those numbers of years. We ask during this time that you all stand. Gentlemen, please remove your caps and join the late model sportsman drivers in remembering the men and women who helped to build this land of opportunity, those that continue to build and defend this nation, and in some cases, those of our people who gave their lives for the love of liberty. To start this salute, we direct your attention to the center of the infield and the flagpole to your far left. There you will see Staff Sergeant James Chapman and PFC Shane LaFontaine representing the United States Army, raising old glory to a chorus of the Battle Hymn of the Republic, as recorded by one of America's greatest legends, the late Elvis Presley.
Night Raceway in the back roads of Kentucky, in the heart of Los Angeles, right here in Scarborough, Maine, or at Daytona Beach, Florida, or Indianapolis, Indiana. You'll find auto racing in every one of the 50 states of this nation. The next piece salutes the land that makes the country, and it's the tip of the hat to each and every one of you with us tonight, no matter what state you call home. It's America the Beautiful, performed by Whitney Houston and raising the colors of the United States of America at the infield flagpole is specialist William Place. every other nation and culture on the earth have sacrificed everything to migrate to a new home that so many of us were lucky enough to be born into. And despite the diverse makeup of this nation's people, as our nation's name implies, we are a people that stand united in our cause. No matter what our beliefs, we can all be proud to be Americans. The next piece of music you will hear, while Staff Sergeant Edward Ball and Private Thomas Sands raise a third flag in the infield, is a song by Lee Greenwood that really sums up American pride. It's called, God Bless the USA. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit And now, ladies and gentlemen, as a fourth and final American banner goes to full staff in the infield, carried by Sergeant William Sawyer, we'll ask you all to remain at full attention for the song of our nation. 
It's the song as performed by Whitney Houston this past January at Super Bowl 25 during the height of the Persian Gulf War, and it brought our people together. At the start-finish line of the raceway, carrying the American flag in the Speedway's pace car, from right here in Scarborough, Maine, and just home from the front line of Operation Desert Storm, is Specialist Michael A. Lamont. Feel free and proud to sing along at this time, ladies and gentlemen. We present to you our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. Ladies and gentlemen, for your fine reception of our special tribute to America on the eve of the 4th of July. We have the all clear from the officials. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'll ask all of you to help me with those four most famous words in auto racing on the count of three. One, two, three. Gentlemen, start your engines! gentlemen as the cars approach the front stretch let's give them a nice beach rich motor speedway fourth of july send off wave your hat your hand light your lighter wave that wand let these drivers know that you send them off with your best wishes for a safe race Blackman Eddie Walsh shows the drivers the green flag this time by. Tighten the lineup up. We should be ready to look for green next time around at turn four. Hey, 
race car on the infield pit road. Tim Lynn, Steve Carrier, bring them down. Look for the start at turn four. Green is out. False start. Green, uh, yellow light, and a yellow flag. And Flagman Eddie Walsh will ask the drivers to tighten it up. Didn't like the looks of that start. Dakota 30393Q. The alarm is going off. You might want to take care of that. Flagman Eddie Walsh keeps him even at turn four. Green is up. Tim Land from the inside. Steve Carrier fighting to the outside. Carrier with the advantage out of the two turn down the back stretch. The young rookie takes over the point. Working lap number one brings him down to lead lap number one. Steve Carrier shows the way. Tim Land in second side by side battle for third. Gary Pauselberg. Gary Johnson, Mike Mayetta Jr. looking for racing room to the inside, Barry Babb looking for room to the outside. Steve Carrier, three car length advantage over Tim Land. Mike Mayetta Jr. up into third, now challenges for second as he looks to the outside of Tim Land. Number three on the move on the outside. Fine job by the rookie in the 83. Steve Carrier continues to stretch out a lead. Over the drivers battling for second. Tim Land to the inside. Mike Mayetta Jr. with a burst into turn one, tries to get it by the 16, and he does on the backstretch. Young two rookies now occupying one and two. Working in lap number seven, Steve Carrier continues to hold a comfortable lead over his fellow rookie in the number three, Mike Mayetta Jr. Kerry Winslow now working out and around Tim Land. Here comes Bobby Babb in the number four. Bobby Babb right out over the stripe. Now up to challenge to that fourth place position. Working to the outside of the number 16 of Tim Land. They battle wheel to wheel down into turn three. Tim Land holds a slight advantage in that battle for the fourth place position. Babb on the backstretch, takes over fourth place. Glenn Cusack in the two, looks to follow suit from the outside. Mike Johnson momentarily boxed in as he sits to the inside of the number two. Now he looks beneath the 16, trying to find room under the Tim Land racer. Can't quite do it, Hester back out of it. Things have tightened up, up front. Top three, bumper to bumper now, Steve Carrier. Mike Mayetta Jr. looks to the outside. Kerry Winslow now to the inside. Winslow up to battle with Mayetta for second. Kerry Winslow takes over second, looks beneath the 83 of Carrier. Kerry Winslow with a nice move up the inside to take over second. Here comes Bobby Babb looking to the outside. Bobby Babb on the move in the number four. Babb up beside Mayetta to challenge for third. Now he looks to the outside of Kerry Winslow, right out against the concrete. Carrier gets a little wide, almost opened up the inside for the 22. 
Here comes Kerry Winslow up the inside. Four car battle at the front. Mike Mayetta back up in a second. Here comes Babb for third as they get beneath the 83 of Carrier. Mike Johnson now up to challenge for fourth. Takes over fourth on the front stretch. Working in lap number 18, Kerry Winslow now stretches it out to about an eight car length lead over the number three of Mike Mayetta Jr. Bobby Babb in the outside groove once again, going to try to the outside of Mayetta in the number three. Mike Johnson filling the inside groove. It's a side-by-side -side battle for third. Heavy hitters trying to break three of, free of the pack. Mike Mayetta Sr. Racing between cars, trying to shake himself up into the top five. Crash on the backstretch, and we're under yellow. Three of Gary Johnson able to drive away. Side into turn one. Advantage to Winslow on the back stretches. He puts the bumper ahead. Side by side, back up at turn three. Coming to turn four. Winslow with the advantage. Bobby Babb dives beneath the number three of Mayetta to challenge for second. Side by side battle now for second place. Bobby Babb to the inside. Young Mike Mayetta to the outside. Mike Johnson now up the inside as Babb takes over second. Johnson up to third. Mike Mayetta working beneath the 83 as he begins his surge to the front. Coming from the back of the pack as the high point men do. Caution flag in the air once again. We have a car up against the tire barrier out of turn four. All clear once again from atop the flag stand. Pace car makes its way onto the infield pit road. Flagman points to turn four, asks the drivers to hold it even. They begin to pick it up. We have green. Terry Winslow with a slight advantage across the stripe down into turn one. Barry Bobby Babb draws it even out of turn two. Crash on the back stretch. Caution flag as we have a hard crash on the back stretch involving the number three, the 83, the 32, the number two, the 31. And we'll get the rest of the cars involved in that as we have them and a report on the drivers as soon as we have it. Word from the safety man is that all the drivers are okay. All clear once again from the flag stand. Kerry Winslow and Barry Babb on the front line. Flagman Eddie Walsh points to turn four. Asks the drivers to hold it even. Green is out. Side by side across the stripe to turn one. Kerry Winslow to the inside. Bobby Babb to the outside. Bobby Babb with the advantage as they race to turn three. the fender ahead at the straight. Winslow fights back on the inside, tries to draw it even. Once again, half a car length advantage by Bobby Babb as they race through turn three, look to turn four. Even across the stripe once again. It will be the halfway point when they cross the stripe next time by. It will be 25 down, 25 to go. Bobby Babb with the advantage. Here comes Mike Mayetta on the outside as he has followed Babb up the outside. 
Bobby Babb trying to squeeze by the number 22 of Kerry Winslow. Car plows high. Here comes May Etter up the middle. Three abreast in a turn one. Mike May Etter right up the middle. Now it's Mike May Etter challenging to the outside of Kerry Winslow. Mike May Etter takes over the lead. Lap 27. New leader, former champion Mike Mayetta. Kerry Winslow is second. Side by side, battle for third. Mike Johnson to the inside. Bobby Babb to the outside. already in the 1991 season. He is the defending dual champion out of the 1990 season here at Beach Ridge Motor Speedway as he captured not only the late model sportsman championship but also the modified championship in 1990. Kerry Winslow continues to hang on to that second place position. Mayetta turns the track at exactly 15 and one half seconds. That will be very hard time for anyone to beat. Mike Johnson continues to try to find a way by the 22 of Winslow. Paul Johnson is fourth. Bobby Randall fifth. sportsman here on this one-third mile oval. Continues to hold a comfortable lead over Kerry Winslow. Kerry Winslow does a nice job of holding off a former champion. Mike Johnson in the number 33. Then comes Paul Johnson and a former four-time champion, Bobby Randall in the number 91. Randall looks for racing room to the outside, then tucks it back in and follows Johnson one more time around. get turned about entering turn two and that will put the field under caution once again looks as though there might have been something dropped on the speedway there from Flagman Eddie Walsh as the car is staged down into turn three. Mike Mayetta to the inside, Kerry Winslow to the outside, Green is up. Advantage Mayetta from the inside as they race to turn one. Paul Johnson closes it up now to challenge Kerry Winslow on the inside. Side-by-side -side battle for second and a side-by-side -side battle for third. Mayetta. Paul Johnson, now the battle for third. Joe Bowser to the inside, Kerry Winslow to the outside. Bobby Babb in fourth, looking to challenge for the next position. Side-by-side -side battle for fourth. Once again, Mike Mayetta stretches out his lead over the second place competitor. This time it's Paul Johnson in the 35. Bob Randall trying to make a move from the back of the pack as the laps wind down. It will be just 10 laps to go as they are working lap 40. Bob Libby as he looks to work. 
work his way up into the top half, does it? Bayetta continues to turn the track in just over 15 and a half seconds per lap. makes its way onto the infield pit road. Mike Mayetta and Paul Johnson on the front line. Green flag is out. Big jump from the inside. Mike Mayetta, Joe Bowser with a quick jump to the front. Paul Johnson gets way loose to the outside. White flag will be in the air. Here comes Randall once again. White flag in the air, one to go. Bobby Randall trying to mount a challenge. Cars all out of shape between turns one and two. Randall now working to the outside of Bobby Bepp. Check it, flag flies. Mike Mayetta claims feature win number three, followed by Bowser, Bobby Bepp, Bob Randall. And from there on back, we'll wait for official scoring. Mike Mayetta collects the colors from Flagman Eddie Walsh. And he will take his parade lap and then be back. And we'll have an opportunity to hear from tonight's winner of the Miller American Firecracker 50 as Mike Mayetta claims feature event number three on the 1991 season. As Mike Mayetta prepares to exit his car, we go trackside now to Andy Cusack. Andy? Ladies and gentlemen, it's another win on the record of Mike Mayetta. Mike, congratulations. It was a rough race out there, a lot of attrition tonight, but you pulled it off. Yeah, it was kind of tough at the end of it there. I don't know what was on the racetrack, but it was pretty slippery, but we made it. The accident up back, you stopped to see your son, Mike. What started everything there? I really don't know. I was right, I was right there when it happened. I, it was just a racing accident, and I thought he might have got it off the wall, but he didn't. And when I came around the corner and saw the rescue guys going in, it, it had me a little concerned. I thought he might have got it through there, but he didn't, so. Seems like Mike Jr. is all right tonight. You're in victory lane. You can't ask for much more going into the 4th of July. John Krasuski has the memento for you from Nappy Distributors. 
Well, it's a pleasure for us to be back here, uh, uh, Nappy Distributors and Miller Brewing Company. Uh, and also, it's a great night, and we're proud to be Americans. And this trophy is from Miller Made the American Way to Mike Mayetta. The great ride, Mike. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And I do, I do hope, just as an aside to present this trophy, I do, I do hope that your son is fine. I'm sure he is. I talked to him when he got in the ambulance, and he seems okay. Just had the wind knocked out of him. He'll be okay. Thank you, Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, another win for Mike Mayetta. Winning his car in this division is the number 14. Three feature wins by Chris Rule, the regular driver, and a feature win last week by Scott Mulkern filling in for Chris Rule. Three wins also by the number six, two win for the number 27. At turn four, Green is up. The 17 with the advantage across the stripe down in a turn one. Bobby Cotton battle shaping up for a second as the cars get together out of turn two. Some metal off the number one of Spray. The 93 gets turned about. That'll bring out the caution flag. Right front damage on the number one of Dave Spray. As he got together on the back stretch with another car and in turn, the 93 gets turned about. 14, Scott Mulkern. Back out of the pit area to rejoin the lineup. We have the all clear from Flagman Eddie Walsh. Ready to try it once again. They have gone nowhere as they were unable to complete a lap before that caution flag flew. So once again, Bobby Cotton, Russ Johnson bring the field down. Green is out. Advantage once again. Bobby Cotton from the inside. Doug Shores up the inside to challenge Russ Johnson for second. He's followed by Spike Manitol up the inside. And they have Russ Johnson hung in that outside groove. The 08 of Mark LeBlanc gets a little squirrely down into the turns, but gets it straightened out. Spin on the backstretch. The 27 of Pelt turns about. And with it, the 14 is up against the backstretch wall. And we are under caution once again. Just one lap recorded on the board. One lap down and all clear from the flag stand. And we should be ready to get back to green flag racing when the field reaches turn four. Pace car makes its way to the infield pit road. Bobby Cotton and Doug Shores this time on the front line. At turn four, Green is out. Doug Shores with a bumper ahead as they cross the stripe. Tries to put the car ahead at turn two. Bobby Cotton fighting back on the inside. Doug Shores takes over the point, working in lap number two. New leader, Doug Shores across the stripe to show the way in his fourth Thunderbird. Followed by Bobby Cotton, then a side-by-side -side battle for third. Russ Johnson in the 19, Spike Matatal to his outside in the 89. Then comes Mark LeBlanc and Ken McLeod. Little bumper tag in turn four. Russ Johnson does a nice job of keeping the car straight. Doug Shores with a strong move to the front. The Shores team has been improving the 07 each and every week. Several heat wins to his credit, but is still looking for feature event number one for the 1991 season in this all-new Super Sportsman division. On the move is the number seven. Kevin Durgan working the outside, challenging to the outside of the 19. Couldn't quite do it that time. Falls back just a little bit. We'll gather it up and challenge once again. 
trying to get into that top five. Your current point leader. Kevin Durgan in the number seven, trying to make the outside groove work and find a way around the 08 of Mark LeBlanc in the 19 of Russ Johnson. Ken McLeod on the move, taking over that second place position as he works out and around the 17 of Bobby Cotton. Ken McLeod now will set his sights on Duck Shores. Spike Manitol now looks to the outside of the number 17. Tries to draw it even between turns three and four, couldn't quite do it. Bobby Cotton hangs on to position number three, but has a lot of pressure from Spike Manitol in the number 89. Kevin Durgan has the fifth place position by himself. There is a four-way battle for sixth. Russ Johnson, David Bath, Mark LeBlanc, and Tim Maloney. Doug Shores gets turned about between turns three and four. Tim Maloney out of shape and off over the top of turn four. He keeps the car underway. Doug Shores across the infield and back onto the track. Ken McLeod with a comfortable lead now over Bobby Cotton. Spike Manitol continuing to try to find a way to challenge the number 17. Kevin Durgan and David Bath closing in on the cars battling for that second place position. Spike Manitol up to the outside of the number 17 now. On the back stretch, Bobby Cotton to the inside, Spike Manitol to the outside. Side by side through turn three to turn four. Slight advantage, Bobby Cotton from the inside, but Manitol draws it even at turn one. Side by side on the back stretch. Bobby Cotton on the inside, Spike Manitol to the inside. Now Kevin Durgan and David Bath right at their back bumpers. Kevin Durgan trying to find a way by, but he is momentarily boxed in. As Bobby Cotton to the inside, Spike Manitol, and now David Bath working to the outside. Four-way battle for second. Bobby Cotton, the rookie, has all kinds of pressure from a couple of veterans. Kevin Durgan on the back bumper, and Spike Manitol to the outside. David Bath just wondering what's going to happen and which lane to take. from the outside takes over second place but he has a lot of ground to make up if he's gonna find a way to get up and challenge race leader Ken McLeod full straightaway advantage by race leader McLeod Spike Manitol beginning to 
draw away from that contingent from position three to five. leader Ken McLeod and just two laps to go next time around. Two laps to go as Ken McLeod crosses the strike. Spike Matatal in second. David Bath now from the outside takes over third. Kevin Durgan tries to follow suit from the outside. Still battling with young Bobby Cotton in the 17. The white flag flies, one to go. Check it, flag in the air for Ken McLeod as he takes feature win number four on the 91 season. Spike Manitol, David Bath, Kevin Durgan, Ken McLeod comes down to collect the colors. As Ken McLeod exits his racer, we go trackside to Andy Cusack. Thank you, Bruce. Another win on the roster tonight in the Super Sportsman Division. This time, a nice round of applause for Ken McLeod. <laughs> Ken, congratulations. You're back in victory lane. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> Feels good to be back. If Ed had some problems with the car, what's been going on with it? Well, we just figured out this week we lost a left front spring that was going away, and we're starting to get it back now and getting closer every week, back to where we were almost. What was the race out there like uh, for you tonight? I know they pulled you over, they talked to you, they asked how the track conditions were, because it seemed kind of slick at first. Yeah, it was real slick on the outside. There was a lot of speedy dry down, and probably should have worked it in a little longer. But it's hard to, t hard to tell until you get going, you know. Well, it panned out for you, and you're here tonight. We congratulate you on that. Peter Sullivan from Nappy Distributors and Miller Genuine Draft has the presentation. Well, thanks. And uh, Kenny, good job on your run. And this is on behalf of Miller Brewing Company and Nappy Distributors. Good job. Thanks. Hey. Thanks a lot. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, a nice round of applause for Ken McLeod. Seven, Larry Gelinas. In the number 70 is Jeff Morgan. 111, Pee Wee Knight. The number 78, Dave Fecto, and the number four, Lloyd Washburn. Yeah. At turn four, Green is out. Don Tapley, something blows the motors away on the number seven. Caution flag immediately as the number seven of Steve Reno has evidently blown something. First, it looked like steam. I guess it is steam coming out the exhaust and a tough break for the youngster. Strong competitor in the number seven, Steve Reno. All clear from Flagman Eddie Walsh as the drivers work down into turn three. Flagman points to turn four. Looking for a start. Green is out. Don Tapley from the inside. Rick Farrell up to challenge. Tango between turns one and two. All the cars stay underway. Don Tapley continues to show the way. But caution will fly.
In a few weeks, we'll have one of Dale Earnhardt's uh, good wrench Chevrolet number threes on display. Last week, as you'll recall, those of you who were here, we had one of Terry Labonte's number 94 Winston Cup cars here. Actually, it was the uh, Rockingham car. That'll be one of Dale Jarrett's cars on display here Saturday night. Looking for a green at turn four, and we have it. Phil Fernet from the outside jumps into the lead. Tangle in turn one. All the cars stay underway and we stay under green. Race leader Phil Fournette in the 66. Don Tapley. Phil Fournette shows the way in the 66. Don Tapley is second. Rick Verrill third. Scott Chapman is fourth. Robbie Herrick fifth. Billy Thompson on the move in the number six. Keep your eyes on the number six. Billy Thompson certainly had the field covered last Saturday night. Only to have mechanical failure. Put him back on pit road with just two laps to go. And Billy Thompson is on a march to the front as he works now to the outside of third place racer, Rick Verrill in the number 64. Billy Thompson now up to challenge to the outside of race leader, Phil Fernet. Thompson working to the outside now of Fernet. New leader as we enter lap number six. Billy Thompson in the number six. Outstanding drive up the outside by Billy Thompson Jr. As he has put the car right out front. We have a tangle in turn two. Two cars get turned about, and that will bring out the caution once again. Still have one car sitting at the top of turn two. Everyone else drives away from that. Cars back in a column of twos, all clear from the flag stand. Eight laps down. Billy Thompson and Phil Furnett will bring the field down once again, and we'll look for a start at turn four. Green is out. Billy Thompson jumps right back into a quick lead. Phil Furnett is second. Don Tapley. Rick Verrill, Scott Chapman round out the top five. Billy Thompson once again with a very impressive lead. Battle is for second. Phil Fernet with a lot of pressure from Don Tapley to the inside, Rick Verrill to the outside.
Mike Field gets the 88 turned about between turns one and two. Gets it back on the way, but we are under caution. 24 up against the backstretch wall. He gets back on the way. The 69 of Richard Olin is also sideways at the bottom of turn four, but he gets the car underway. Ready to try once again, 12 laps down. Looking for a start at turn four. Green flag. Billy Thompson jumps into a quick lead once again. Battle is for second. Don Tapley to the inside. Phil Fournette to the outside. Side by side battle right straight back through the pack. Scott Chapman, Rick Verrill. Billy Thompson so far has the field covered just as he did last Saturday night. Approaching the halfway mark. It will be 15 down and 15 to go as they cross the stripe this time. Thompson with a comfortable lead over Don Tapley. Then comes Scott Chapman. Richard Olin in the 69. Tim Gendron in the number 12. We have a tangle between one and two, but the cars get separated. 21 of Don Culper, the 06 of Dennis Quinn. Thompson now. Nearly a straightaway lead over Don Tapley. Scott Chapman trying to find a way to challenge the number 15. Tim Gendron on the move on the outside. Gendron sets the number 12 in that outside groove. That opens up the inside for Dennis Hall in the 94. Now Dennis Hall is up to challenge Gendron for the fifth place position. again from the flag stand. Flagman points to turn number four. Green is out. Billy Thompson right back into the lead. Scott Chapman up to challenge the number 15 of Don Tapley.
Side by side battle for third. Tim Jenner to the inside. Don Tapley to the outside. Three wide racing out of turn four. Man on the move. Dave Fecto in the number 78. Dave Fecto, current high point man in this limited sportsman division, has come from the back of the pack, and he is up knocking on the door of the top five. Looking for racing room at the rear bumper of the number 15, current point leader, Dave Fecto. Once again, Billy Thompson demonstrates the power and the handling of the number six as he has worked himself back out into a comfortable lead. Two laps to go next time by, and that is where misfortune struck last Saturday night for Billy Thompson as he held a big lead, only to have his transmission let go. And I'm sure he's hearing sounds tangle in the four-turn. Don Tapley and Pee Wee Knight come together. Once again, the caution flag will fly with just two laps to go. This is exactly what happened to Billy Thompson last Saturday night. Restart with two laps to go and his transmission let go. Once again, all clear from Flagman Eddie Walsh as the drivers work the backstretch, staging for what I'm sure Billy Thompson hopes will be the last restart of tonight's 30 lap feature event. Billy Thompson, Scott Chapman on the front row. Green flag is out. Thompson once again from the inside with the advantage. Scott Chapman tucks it into second. Tim Jenner is third. The battle is for fourth. Phil Weeks to the inside. The 69 of Richard Olin to the outside. Two laps to go this time by. Billy Thompson once again working his number six out into a comfortable lead. White flag in the air, one lap to go. Billy Thompson looking for his first wind crash on the backstretch as the 86 is up against the wall. Check it, flag and the caution. Billy Thompson grabs his first feature event of the 1991 season, followed across the line by the 85 of Scott Chapman, the 12 of Tim Jenron, 19 of Phil Weeks, and the 78 of Dave Fecto. Billy Thompson driving a Pontiac Firebird, sponsored by Custom Homes by Malcolm Pottle, and the Pizza Barn along with Tom Fogg, comes down to collect up the colors from Flagman Eddie Walsh, making his parade lap, and he will be back in victory lane in just a few moments, and we'll have a chance to hear from young Billy Thompson as he captures his First feature event of the 1991 season becomes the 11th different feature event winner here at Beach Ridge Motor Speedway in this very competitive limited sportsman division. Thompson returns the colors to Flagman Eddie Walsh. Prepares to exit his racer. Ladies and gentlemen, if ever there was a man with a mission tonight, it was Billy Thompson. You made it, Billy. Congratulations. Thank you, Andy. It's been a long time coming. Well, how was it out there tonight? You got your heat win, you got your feature win, and it was a uh, touch and go there for a while, but it certainly was a lot better for you than last week. Well, I want to thank a lot of people. I want to thank Malcolm Bottle. He really helped out over the week just getting here tonight. 
I didn't like to thank UPS. I had the gears on my doorstep 10 o'clock yesterday morning. Uh, a year ago, my father died. The week before he died, he told me, go win opening day next year, last year. It's been a long time, but it's been a year and a half. He was patient. I don't know how patient he was, but we finally got one anyway. I'd like to thank, I'd like to thank all the other sponsors, too, and the crew. The crew's worked real hard, and we're here, finally. You're here finally is right. You earned it all the way tonight, Billy. We congratulate you on a much, much emotion-filled win, and we were with you all the way. John Krasuski from Nappy Distributors has the, the award for you to put on the mantle. Billy, I heard you had some tough luck there last week, but this one here was well-deserved. You ran a great race. Uh, congratulations to Strophy from Miller Brewing Company. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to say one, one other thing. On behalf of Nappy Distributors and Miller Brewing Company, we want to thank the Cusack family and all the fans here at Beatrice Speedway for having us aboard again this year. And we'll be back again next year, July 3rd. And John, we want to thank you for being with us. Thanks to the Nappy Distributing Company and Miller Brewing Company. Billy Thompson, congratulations to you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Thompson. We thank you all for being here with us tonight. We wish you a great holiday tomorrow. Celebrate our independence. We'll be thinking of you all. Bruce Elder, back to you. Thank you, Andy. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our race program. If you're headed home, we urge you to please drive carefully. If you'd like to stay around for a bit, you are certainly welcome to do so. As you can see, some of the crews have begun to bring the race cars out to the front stretch. You are certainly welcome to stay if you care to. We hope that you'll make it a habit to be right back here with us each and every Saturday night as we present short track racing at its very best right here at Beach Ridge Motor Speedway. Good evening.